HIP74 for all you people who own radios, uh, like 430H, for example, because most of them are 430Hs, I feel like. Um, HIP74 is supposed to be implemented on November 23rd, but it could, because it's like the week of Thanksgiving in the US, it could be like the 27th or 28th, this would come into effect. Um, and for those unaware, uh, right now, just by having your radios plugged in, your 430s and stuff, um, you're just getting tokens for for just having them online. Uh, this is going to change how many coverage points you have. So no more static rewards of like, um, I think right now a 430 gets about 11,000 mobile tokens a day, uh, regardless of if it's good coverage or bad coverage or whatever. So the, the number of coverage points... Um, you need to have to to make about the same amount of uh, mobile tokens right now. Um, you're going to need 2,600 coverage points at least to break even of what we wear. So if you have less than 2,600 coverage points, um, you're going to lose tokens. Um, like your rewards are going to go down. So, um, but th this is just like assuming the network stays the same. Um, What's going to happen is there's going to be a lot of overlap in radios, and they're all going to lose their rewards. Uh, I think it's capped at five per five five overlapping right now. Um, sorry, I'm just getting messages. Um, yeah, so so you could have five overlapping uh, radios coverage, and if you have like twenty in one spot, only five of those are going to get the rewards. So those those lost rewards to those fifteen radios are going to come back in the pockets of everybody else who has properly set up radios that aren't like stacked on top of each other. So just just to let you guys know, twenty six hundred points is with today's numbers, but uh, expect all the numbers to change dramatically uh, on the twenty third or the twenty seventh or twenty eighth. So just just a w uh, word of warning. Uh, so you guys aren't caught by surprise. Uh, and, and to be fair, HIP74 has been coming for like a year almost at this point. It's been a really long time. It's taken a lot longer than we expected. Um, look, T-Double, look, I, I'm going to put it in chat how you guys could check your coverage points. Um, hold on, let me just paste it. Um, you could go to this website and chat, and you could find your radio on it, like zoom into where your radio is and click on it. It will tell you how many um, points you have. So yeah, I, I and and it doesn't matter if you're in a in a farm in the middle of nowhere. It's it's working based on coverage points, and you get more coverage points um, the further like your radio provides coverage. So there's going to be people probably gaming it, aiming it at water because it. It, it like works really well over water to just farm a bunch of points. I don't. I'm not encouraging you guys to do that, but people are going to figure out creative ways to to boost their their points. So uh, let's see. So yeah, that was hip seventy four. I mean, honestly, we're probably going to hear a lot about this today too in the working group call, um, just because it's some people are going to lose a lot of tokens and they're going to be pissed and. This is the reason why. But also, not to shit on everyone, you might make more tokens than before, too. So uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, let's see. Okay, well, while we're talking about HIP74, uh, we keep getting asked a lot. People keep asking me, at least, a lot what we're doing with Wi-Fi deployments on Mokin. And uh, I don't know how many of you in here have units, but I'm just going to explain what our... our path is um we're, we're not going to be deploying indoor units we're only going to be deploying the outdoor wi-fis uh from the looks of it we're just going to completely skip over the indoor units it, it's easier to deploy the outdoor units than the indoor units so we'll we'll probably have uh, outdoor units for sale for people or if people want to buy outdoor units from us instead of directly through helium um yeah so that's yeah, that's pretty much our, our plan on that. Um, just the re the reason why we're not doing indoors is because it's very difficult to 
Um, I, I keep seeing like requests in chat to come on stage, but they disappear. So if you guys want to come on, just type it in chat so I, I don't miss it, I guess. Um, but the reason we're not doing indoors is because honestly, we've we've been uh, securing locations for a couple months now in preparation for the hex boosting and stuff. And it's just very, very hard to get these boosted locations. And, you know, it, we think it's just going to be e easier to blast it from the outside. Um, it's not going to get good signal inside, but Helium's asking a lot. I don't, I don't know how many people will be able to get um, these boosted locations. Um, j just to talk about the boosted locations while I'm here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to invite uh, Goaltender up. He wants to speak. Um, there are, I think, three radios on the whole network that are in a boosted hex. So uh, it's not much. Um, so one one of those people are getting 400,000 mobile tokens a day and the other person's getting uh, 7.2K. So one of them's not getting much, but 400K mobile tokens is a lot. It's, uh, last I checked, it was like $52 a day, but I think the prices went up a little bit now, so it could be more. What's up, Goldhender? Hey, you what's up, Kevin? Uh, glad to be here. Um, You're all yeah, it's glad to see a little push of the price. Um, as you and I have spoken about, um, hopefully we see a, a push towards the IoT price. Uh, that's going to have give us a big upper hand with deployments because uh, with that low price we saw a long time, uh, this project was looking almost impossible in my eyes. And I and I'm all in on this. This is like my number one project. I mean, I'm basically almost doing it for a living. And um, you know, if the token price doesn't make enough sense where you can pay a host, it gets really difficult. Yeah, um, a lot of this project seems to be riding on is the price good enough for people to want to deploy? Um, Certainly, but. Yeah, but I it, it seems to be going up a little bit. I mean, I can't predict the future. I don't know if it will go up a lot, go down a lot. I'd have no clue. Um, but it, but it's funny because you mentioned paying hosts. Um, I see a lot of people overpay their hosts a lot. Like we, I've argued with people in Discord about this. Some people pay their hosts like a couple hundred dollars a month for locations, and I'm like, what the hell? Some some hosts will pay like five percent of the mobile tokens, if that. Like. Some hosts really don't take anything. Um, well, so I, I, I think the I'll people who, who can do uh, that. Of, I've had most of my hosts wanted cash uh, for really good spots. Um, yeah, for, for where, sure. You know, and that's where you need to be able to leverage yourself correctly. And if the token price is strong enough, people will be willing to, in the community, I think, to front a little bit of cash to claim enough tokens. Um, there just has to be enough confidence and support in the token. Yeah. Um, mo most of our installs we've done um, are all paid um, token share. Like we give the host like 10 or 15, 5%. depends on whatever they agreed on. Um, I don't think we've actually paid anyone fiat uh, because normally we see what happens when people start paying fiat is they go underwater really fast. And uh <laughs> like you're you a lot of companies just end up dying like that very quick they yeah, can't make no, the I, payments I, anymore uh, pay everyone f fiat but there's certain locations that i would i would do it in a heartbeat to get you know um right now i don't see any locations i would be willing to pay fiat for you know with with what's going on but um if the mobile token continues to be supported um let's say for example you could get into one of those hundred times boosted hexes it might be worth to spend fifty dollars a month or a hundred dollars a month to your host, correct? Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. It's a different ball game if you could get inside these hexes. It's that th that's you know, that that's amazing if you could actually score one of those hexes. What one thing I gotta say that I've been very happy with is uh, the Helium mobile mapping payout. Uh, I gotta say, across crypto, and I always try to push this to help the Helium mobile project. It's probably hands down, dollar for dollar, the best mining out there across the board. Meaning what you have to put in to what you get out, dollar for dollar. 
uh yeah i don't know all the projects i can say but but if, like if there's that's experience projects yeah. out there that, that you can spend five dollars a month and make 30 yeah or, or uh, I, I don't man know many projects like that you know um, actually you know i wanted i wanted to just bring up something off topic i saw in the chat here um i, I don't have the link on me but have you guys seen the um, the auction that is going on for all the Calchip stock? Yes, I have. Yeah, so they're apparently I, uh, going bankrupt or liquidating or whatever. Yeah, so I I got a message a couple of weeks ago about why it's happening, and from what they told me, it was actually hold on. <laughs> Let me scroll through my DMs. I didn't think I'd be talking about this, but I guess I am now. Um. Hold on, hold on. I want to make sure I give you the right the right info here. Um, they need to pay a loan back to their parent company. I don't know who Calchip's parent company is, honestly. I never even looked into it. And apparently they're in a legal battle with Emirate. So um, take that with a grain of salt, everyone. Someone messaged me that a couple of weeks ago. And I don't know if it's true or not. So, But it definitely interests in Emirate of all people, but whatever, I guess. Um, is Emirate even still in business? I I don't know. That's why I'm I'm a little confused. Like why Emirate of all names possible that came up. Um, oh, hold on, I'm gonna invite someone. Let's uh, come up on stage. Hey, what's up? Hey, how's it going? Not bad, not bad. Another week of crypto. Always, every week, it's exciting. Things are uh, changing across the space. Especially now with the prices of like everything going crazy and the ETFs around the corner. Yeah, you, you saw Ethereum today? Man, it is Yeah, yeah, up. spiked up to like 2K a little over. Um, yeah, I, yeah. I saw they were going to do like an Ethereum ETF. To, to be fair, it's funny because in Canada, where I'm at, we already have the Bitcoin ETFs and the Ethereum ETFs. We've had them for years. So I guess the US is... is just waiting for this to happen a lot of people want in yeah yeah it's gonna happen um it's yeah it it's very it's much harder over here especially the, the only thing that that the largest holder of bitcoin in the world is the u.s government is it actually the u.s is yeah like the, the government for real has the most bitcoin, because of all the bitcoin they've seized uh well like silk road i, I mean, mean they, i'm happy so i don't i think i think it, these etfs will eventually go through being that the government has something to gain from it you know the the only word of caution i always give on these etfs even even the one i have in canada apparently when i buy a, a chunk of it they'll buy an equivalent chunk of like bitcoin or ethereum but it still falls in the first rule of crypto right like not your keys not your coins uh, so that's like my only concern all the time with these things. Well, I mean, it, it'll just bring in a lot more people, kind of like Robin Hood did, who like, you know, let's face it, I'll, I'll even say the first time I bought crypto, I bought through Robin Hood just because I had never had a wallet and was afraid of losing the keys and like until someone could actually physically show me everything, you know, and I could go through all the steps. Yeah, it might be like it's a, kind of a nice on board for people to kind of get your toes wet with it and you know, introduce yourself to, you know, to follow it and see how it does and feel like you have a little piece of the action. Yeah, I, I see two big advantages of it. Number one, um, it makes it very easy, like uh, like Tender's saying, for anybody to get in, um, which, would, which should help but demand the price. Number two, since uh, these are all institutional investments, they need to have verified clean coins. So uh, that also helps as well. Um, to kind of negate some of the negativity in the space around, uh, um, you know, what people are doing in crypto, especially, uh, you know, around the world that isn't clean, um, help make sure that, uh, you know, it helps defend its reputation a bit too. So can, can any of you it, guys verify, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I just, this was a real important thing I forgot to mention. Um, there was a conference, uh, I, I'm in a couple of different crypto groups and 
some of the guys in some of my groups love uh, helium. Other guys don't like it. You know, they got in at the wrong time or they got screwed on miners. And there was a couple of people saying that uh, helium really was not represented well at a cellular conference in Las Vegas where Verizon was there, AT&T, Mint Mobile. And they kind of like shunned helium like it was a joke. Has anyone heard about that? I personally haven't, but I didn't pay attention to any of those conferences. Again, I mean, you know, it doesn't mean much. It's hearsay. I'm just wondering if somebody knew anything about it. But I mean, again, to Verizon, Helium probably is a joke right now. You know, they only got 6,000 subscribers. But I mean, <laughs> every cell phone company had to start somewhere. You know, you didn't start with a million. Yeah, well, Verizon must have had like a... Uh... Whenever they started, I don't even know when they started. They must have had to slowly ramp up subs also. Not to say it will happen the same with Helium, I don't know, but everyone starts somewhere. Absolutely. So, uh, man, I always hear your name wrong. Froman Benader? I don't know. <laughs> you you wanted to chat about something? I I assume. Yeah. So what I wanted to chat about was you know some I th I think a big announcement you know from uh, you know <laughs> everyone's favorite project uh, Xnet here. Um. So they they announced their their Wi-Fi onboarding program publicly for signups. So this is for you know existing uh, Wi-Fi installations with you know the big vendors you know like Cisco, Meraki, Juniper, Mist AI. Aruba, um, Ruckus, uh, the big guys saying, you know, if anyone is interested in working with them, um, they have offloading, uh, ready to go. Technical integration is straightforward um, and they can work with you to get to get a contract in place. Uh, you do have to go through their program. So it's not like anyone can just change their Wi-Fi to Xnet and start earning. Um, they've got to have, uh, you know, a screening process in place. But so they're uh, they're moving pretty fast. Um, they haven't talked publicly about you know which MNOs they're working with, but uh, they have said at the test site um, alluded to um, MNO partners that are are paying them. So uh, this definitely this Wi-Fi offload space heats up. Um, they're still alive. So you know obviously on the CBRS, I don't think we're going to hear something for a while. Um, I think that it's just they thought they'd be. They thought they'd be, you know, farther at this point, but they're not. Um, so that's, I just push all that till next year. But uh, this Wi-Fi program is is interesting, and I'm looking forward to to seeing it in person and uh, mm -hmm. see how it works. So, so th this Wi-Fi program, like from what I, because I don't know much about this for Xnet side. Um, if there's a mall already covered with uh, Meraki APs. Uh, you wouldn't have to deploy new hardware. You could just tap into the already existing, like, infrastructure, right? Yeah, I mean, it, it's easy. You can do it in five minutes. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, it, if you have an existing it, 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 it's such a better approach. it's extremely efficient. You don't have to buy hardware. Um, it, my, my only yeah. little concern is... Um, obviously I have a concern with everything. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. you then in, instead of installing hardware, you now got to convince the whole like IT department of the mall or something, right. To let you like do it, I guess, I guess that's the ball game has changed a little bit, right? Like you have yeah, to, and that's why they're IT. being a little, I think a little tighter on who they work with, because this isn't something, uh, number one, they're, they're not going to take crypto. They're only going to take cash and they want contracts with things like servicing support guarantees also on xnet side like this can't uh, they, they want a guarantee of minimum traffic because there is a cost to uh sending that traffic back to the carrier so um yeah i see somebody notes here there's no partnership there's no partnership on the cbrs side but there are partnerships on the wi-fi side so i, I um, feel like um yeah. i feel like the cbrs i i know every week i keep jumping back and forth but like I think the CBRS is just not um, not where it's at anymore. Everyone's jumping to Wi-Fi, and and right. I've heard Helium Helium's talk. I've heard Helium talk about this proxy program. Exact. I think it's the same concept of of what Xnet just pulled off. But I think Xnet beat them to the punch on it. Um, they did. Where, where I want to see more of it and more of it in person. Um, 
but uh, they beat him to the punch on offloading. But uh, I want to see, you know, a big deployment myself. Uh, yeah, because we were looking, uh, we, we were securing some malls in, in Florida for the hex boosting and for helium. And uh, honestly, when, when you have to think about like putting up access points in the roof, running the Ethernet cable, like dude, it's tons of work. It's so expensive. We rather just hook into their existing infrastructure and not make a mess of everything. Like it's so much cleaner and faster. Um, so I'm really hoping they they do that. Um, well, Helios. Yeah. Um, I, I know you said XNS does it now, but I think it is such a good way to go about it. Yeah, I mean, it, it does raise the bar a bit too. I mean, you can't just you know throw it up in your house. Um, this has to be something to where you work with them. They're going to want insurance. They're going to want to work with a legal entity. They want to know you're somebody who's going to be around after a year. So... You know, there's the other part of it, too. But to get big deals, like you mentioned here inside of stadiums, arenas, conference centers, hotels, large chains, um, you know, it definitely raised the bar of working with them. And I think that's why they're being a little more protective about this partner program. They got to work with people they can trust. Um, and also these agreements that are going to be signed, you know, require they've, they've mentioned there's a requirement for a minimum amount of data. So they don't just want to throw this up everywhere. It's definitely going to be targeted as, as they're known for with their clusters. So um, that, that I think, is a big announcement that hasn't really gotten much attention lately. Um, obviously, XNet liquidity for CBRS is – XNet token liquidity is pretty much non-existent at this point. So um, I see a lot of people who are kind of packing up and said, you know, I, 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 get, I pay rent. I can't do it anymore. And, you know, that makes sense. You got to um, do what you got to do. I, I've been in that situation, too. You, you're um, you're more familiar with XNet than myself. Um, are and they going to like I'm, make a new token for Wi-Fi? No. Like, is that no? It's going to be the same CBRS shared token. So um, these partners require fiat payment, so that makes it a little more complicated. Um, there can't be any crypto involved in a lot of these agreements that I'm I'm looking at right now. Ah, uh, okay. Can I ask oh. uh, from Anita a question? Um, I wanted to ask because in working group last week, uh, Zero Tweets, Boris, who's usually a very honest and pretty understated kind of guy, came in. He was in Ukraine last week and working with a team there. And he came and kind of storming into the group saying, hey, listen, we just made a major breakthrough and we have fixed the handoffs for iPhones. Um, he sounded really confident about it, like it was a slam dunk. I mean, we'll find out today at 2 o'clock. But um, I thought that was good news because I I personally feel, up until I heard that last week, that like I was all out on CBRS. But like if CBRS can work, it has its, it has its purposes. The range is pretty good. It just it never connects. But if those connects can be as good or close to Wi-Fi, um, those radios will have a purpose. I heard iOS 17. Yeah, I've seen that as well. They said uh, there's a fix out. I haven't, I've got to check if that's out for uh, for my iPhones. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I've seen that as well. Um, it looks like it really was a breakthrough. They were able to start talking to Apple and um, get that, get handoffs fixed, which is a, a huge improvement on handoffs. Um, and for, you got to remember, if, if Apple's able to do these handoffs, I'm sure Android will follow. Well, maybe it depends if Google wants to work with you or not. It, mm -hmm. I mean, how many years have they been trying to talk to Apple and it finally finally got through? Mm -hmm. um, so it's not easy, but it helps a lot. Um, I know there were, you know, there were some other things, uh, some other discussions we've had as well around uh, working with Apple. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it's still going. Um, I'm looking forward to the national plan. Uh, 20 bucks has been brandied about quite a bit um, coming out soon. So along with the new coverage points. So I'm looking forward to, I want to see more data on CVRS. I want to see more data on Wi-Fi. Like that's the future for all this. Um, and I don't, you know, I don't really see, I know a lot of people are like XNet or Helium. Like they're, they're looking for completely different customers at this point, very different strategies. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know why you wouldn't work with both. Yeah. Um, it's, unless you're worried 
I mean, obviously for CBRS, I, I can understand people don't want to deploy that much XNet right now and want to wait till there's a announcement made. That's fine. But when it comes to Wi-Fi, it is full speed ahead. Um, I, I would say if you don't get moving, you're going to be left in the dust. Yeah, wi- Wi-Fi seems like the uh, it just works, right? No one has any problems with it. I, I'm I'm super hyped to to start this Wi-Fi stuff. Yeah, I mean, I have a Wi-Fi router, and it's really good. It it moves, it grabs those phones, outstanding. Well, it's a it's a very tried and true technology. I mean, it isn't. This isn't the first generation of this. Like everything else, we're blazing new trail. But Wi-Fi, you know, cellular Wi-Fi offload is a very tried and true technology at this point. It's extremely stable. You know, um, one one of the things I wanted to actually talk about really quick where the uh well you kind of already mentioned it the nationwide um plan for twenty dollars like if everyone's not aware um you were only able to buy the phone plan in miami and it was five dollars but um helium decided to open it up to the whole nation so you could buy helium mobile plan for 20 bucks a month anywhere now i don't know if it it's in like puerto rico and stuff like that but um yeah that that's cool so Hopefully, we'll see some boosted hexes around the nation. It's and kind it of a double-edged also- sword that, uh, you know, for guys that have, like, I've been in there since the first day of mapping, and, like, I love the mapping rewards, but I love the I love the project more. And as soon as it goes nationwide, I'm sure we're going to see our rewards dissipate, which is normal. But in the end of the day, I just want the project to succeed, and uh, I don't even care about the mapping rewards. But what a nice thing that they did, you know? I mean, to get everybody going. Not, yeah, not, actually, to mention, the, not, uh, not to mention allowing you to pay your bill with mobile. I mean, that's incredible. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Um, that, I actually, mean, the, I, biggest I, thing, the biggest thing that shows me is that that shows that Helium themselves believe in the token. Because why would they want the token if they think it's going to plummet, right? Uh, I mean, I don't think they have any choice. They got to make this token price go up so everyone uh, deploys. <laughs> um, but yeah, so paying, with the, paying with the tokens is cool. Um, you know, I, I actually just wanted to, I guess I wanted to shill out one thing for Helium, I guess, because it's so stupid, I find. Uh, it's funny. They're given pies. So if, <laughs> if, if you guys want to order an indoor Wi-Fi, um, I'll put the coupon code if if you if you decide to order indoor Wi-Fi hotspot, they'll give you a pie. Uh, it's not it's not a joke. It's they, actually they, for real. Um, the, so if you use that coupon code, maybe. yeah, I, I think I think all the pies are shipping from San Francisco yes. from Three Babes Bakery. Um, yeah, but they recommend they they recommend air quotes you order it before november 14th because then you'll be able to get the pie in time for uh thanksgiving i guess uh i don't know when thanksgiving is in the u.s but i'm i know it's coming up so um do you guys have thanksgiving in canada well it it passed uh like a couple a month ago or two months ago it's always uh confusing to me thanksgiving time <laughs> um thanksgiving here in the U.S. is kind of like the precursor to Christmas, you know, Thanksgiving and the next day Christmas shopping starts. Yeah, I, I need to get on my uh, my my you guys shopping. Do Boxing Day up oh. there? Yes, it's it's after Christmas though. So my birthday, twenty sixth. Oh, I think. Um, actually, you know, um, so, something else I wanted to bring up just two things real quick. Just, just to share with the community while we're here, um, we we started building the the ROI calculators for all the projects. Uh, we just have four right now, just because we're doing it on in stages. But uh, you'll be able to eventually come here, and we'll have calculators for every project: XNet, um, Sword Chain, uh, uh, all all of them. Like it just takes a while for us to. To figure out how the rewards work and read the white papers and get all the numbers right but uh, you'll be able to to calculate rewards there and um one other thing i wanted to mention i don't know why i guess i guess it's just going to be a bit i do every week um 
just talking about projects that we've discovered over the weekend or like over last week. And uh, I just wanted to mention this one, the Wingbits project. If, have you guys heard of it? Yeah, very familiar with it. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to let you guys know. Uh, per personally, I, bu I bought a Hex, so I'm going to be a little bit biased here. Um, it's just some like airplane tracker thing that I imagine they'll try and sell the data eventually to like sites like Flight Radar or something. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, they're, they're doing is it worth flight, anything? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, they, they already get so much of that data for free. Um, I think that might be a little bit of a stretch, but yeah, I mean, I've got hope they can find somebody who wants some data. Um, yeah, yeah, for that, locations. that's why. Uh, th that's why I was just mentioning. Like, I found this project. I paid for it. Blah blah blah. Will it make money ever? I have no clue. But uh, but it's it's fun. It's new. It's different. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, it's it's not tracking drones. It's literally just planes right now. It seems like. Uh, yeah, you gotta have the, an ASD one, transceiver, so drones don't have those. Yeah. The um the the one thing I really wanted just to talk about quickly on on this about this project in specific, um because I think it could have some effect with helium. Uh, the way you you have to like buy a hex, which I find is very interesting. I've never seen this mechanic before, so like. Um, there's let's New York is one big hex pretty much, and only three people could put a device in your hex, and you have to buy the hex. It's twenty dollars, uh, so three people could buy it, so it's sixty dollars in total, um, and then no one else could deploy in those hexes. So yeah, it's, but, it's 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 just a very interesting model to me that can, never. Can, can I ask you though, like with the technology today, it's for this is for aircraft, right? Yeah, yeah, for planes. Okay. I'm just saying that I have a couple of friends who work as air traffic controllers and they have tens of millions of dollars of equipment to deal with aircraft location, where they are, backup, GPS, everything. I can't imagine what these little, whatever they're going to be, pieces are going to help the airline industry in any way. Plus, yeah, I don't think the airline or air traffic controllers are going to want regular unidentified people tracking aircraft in any way. This is already public data. And, and the reason for no, no, the, I got that. buying I got the that. I, makes don't, it, yeah. I just don't know how, how, how would it be saleable? Maybe you could explain it to me and open my eyes. Well, I don't know either how it's saleable. I just think it's an interesting project. I, yeah, no, I, I, yeah, I, yeah, I think it's about the commercial viability. I mean, I think that's something they're working on. I mean, but the transceivers, these are the same transceivers. These are very similar to Onacoy or Geodet. All these mine the sky projects are using the same hardware. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's it's very similar. Um, I mean, now there's some specifics in there. They're not exactly the same, but generally they're they're very similar. And um, I'm thing I, I really get Wingbix and Onacoy a lot for. I always have a soft spot for DIY projects. So get the hardware, buy it yourself, build it yourself for the, the hands-on guys like me who like to like to get dirty and uh, do it soup to nuts. But uh, yeah, I think it's more like something fun. Will it work out? No. Um, there's already, there's a lot of people who already do this for free. Um, I know somebody by me who, who does flight tracking for free and lots of people who fly. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll see. Um, mm -hmm. The, the data here, you know, there is, um, there is a degree of, of, of redundancy and accuracy. So the more, um, these are very, very sensitive receivers. So, um, you know, there, there's something there like RTK grade in the space, but um, I will say, you know, that's, you know, I don't wanna go too much farther just because I'm not super deep into the mind the sky space. It's not not really a, a project I've been very active in. It's not my, my background. I'm not, uh, I don't fly a plane, so. <laughs> Um, but it is, it is interesting. It is different. Um, JD, I actually thought you were going to go a whole different way with it. I was going to say there's been amongst other projects we don't talk about much like, um, world mobile, uh, Althea, um, all of them have been very active as well. Um, they've had a lot of, they've had several announcements recently about their projects, um, especially world mobile. Um, they're putting up blimps like Google did. They have licensed spectrum. They have carrier partnerships. So World Mobile seems to be on a real terror What's, lately. Um, the thing is, I, I I don't hear anything like um, 
I, I try Unless and you... I pay attention to stuff that's like exciting for for people who might want to buy in. But can you even buy something for World Mobile? Is is there? You, you can, but so World Mobile is a very different model. Um, somewhat similar to Carrier One, another another project um, that's been kind of. They don't have a lot of updates lately, but they've been going to a lot of conferences. Um, so World Mobile is, is uh, completely passive. You you invest in the project and your sites earn tokens, but you don't actually deploy anything yourself. So, so they deploy it on your behalf, I guess, when you give them the money and stuff. Yeah, you you basically invest in it. They they do a public sale of of nodes, and you buy the node, and then you're paid based on the node that goes up. So it's very passive. It's it's basically handing over money as investment. Yeah. Uh, you know, I I like that style. Uh, just because there's another company called IoNet that was reaching out to us too, and they want to build like I'm on the are you on their beta? I've been on it since launch. Cool. Um, but but they want us to help. Um, like we're we're trying to think of a plan. Like um, we'll we'll get racks in a data center. We'll put a bunch of like A100s or something in there or H100s, Nvidia. Uh, and then we'll sell individual ones to customers or finance them to people. Um, There's already a lot of a lot of companies in that space. It's pretty uh, competitive. Yeah, but but they were very specific. Uh, IO.net and they don't want to use GPUs at people's houses. Very very firm. They don't want to do this um, because you don't know when their power goes out. Their their upload and download speed is too shit anyways. Um, it's just not a reliable thing. They really want to like cluster them in data centers. It sounds like, which honestly, it makes a lot more sense to me for an enterprise client. <laughs> like they, they don't want random stuff at people's house. They want stuff that's going to be up all the time. And no, I, I agree. Um, I've been, I've been doing that for several, several years. The, the issue is always the price. Like for data sure, centers for sure. are, are much more expensive than a decentralized compute network like orders yeah. of magnitude more money so that's yeah. where the rubber meets the road can you eke out a profit in the middle there um and what will they commit to too a lot of these so i i like to do a lot of work with akash i've been you know active there in their community you know and there i was part of their test net i put my gpus on it so they've been pretty flexible about it but some of the higher tier providers like render um uh fluid stack etc i really moved towards reliability because if they sign contract any any contract with uh somebody outside the crypto space um they have to put in guarantees and pay back yeah, for, for that's sure that's that, that's but, exactly what i'm concerned about no company is yeah. gonna spend money with something with no slas or no like <laughs> they're not gonna buy some gimmicky thing that works half the time yeah, I mean it's interesting. They actually just updated their interface to where you can you can put your so while well, they allow you to put so they they're also want to be a compute marketplace. So they're they're jumping into a competitive place where I would argue Akash is the leader. Um, you've got other guy other you know key players like Threefold. Um, they're kind of you know a lot less well known, um, but there's there's plenty of players in the compute space now. It's it's rapidly getting commoditized very quickly. There's there's too many projects, too many marketplaces, too many players, um, and they're all competing with each other. I would argue as a as a provider, it's very hard to eke out a profit right now. There's yeah. there's so much competition compared to two three years ago. But especially if if you're going to ask people to buy like H100 cards, they're like what thirty sixty thousand dollars. And then normally these things are rented out for like, I don't know, like $2 an hour or something. Like you, it's going to take forever to Well, that, that's to only maybe... if, if, you know, you can, so some market marketplaces let you define like a minimum rental period, which helps. But the main, the main thing is like, you only make money if that's hundred percent utilized. So of course, like me, and that's never going to probably happen. Like you need, you well, need a big the client list that wants it. You know, there are marketplaces that I've been part of that will like I, I typically like to do one year contracts with clients. So they get it, you know, dedicated to them. Those those have a higher margin than just throwing it on to uh, throwing it on one of these marketplaces. So I agree. You know, I think those are good concerns. And definitely when you talk, you know, if you're in serious discussions with them, you know, I definitely pay attention to your numbers and your budget. Um, Look, cause, cause I'm, um, like I, I, I use AI, I, I make stuff 
I have websites that people could generate their images and and I, I have bunches of 4090s that run all the back end and I know it's expensive and I really am interested in these projects so I could lower my cost of running these sites because it just I can't afford to to run all these 4090s like takes up so much power at home and like i'm literally running oh, it yeah. at home because it's very cost effective that way but I mean, they both use um, power look at the a100s how much yeah, they use yeah, yeah, yeah. i mean um yeah um not to mention the other requirements for what they need to be in uh diverse power diverse backhaul um 10 gig um interconnect so yeah it, it, it starts going up there but uh another one i'd look at is gp utopia i've been a big fan of them um they're they're good for like chat if you're looking to save money try their uh ai chat out um they're pretty cheap um so there's uh uh you know i, I yeah I, I it's a, another space i have i'm much more active in because they actually provide compute for multiple projects so it's uh but i'll, I'll just say like personally i've actually gotten out of the gpu game because in my opinion there's no it's hard to make profit in gpus right now yeah it's slim margins <laughs> JD, I, I was going to ask you. Uh, oh, I'm glad to see Joe here. Hey, Joe. Hey, Joe. Um, Hello. Hey, how are you, Joe? Uh, I was going to ask you guys about Real Cellular. I believe it's called. Um, oh. They're doing the same thing as Helium, except uh, from the people I was told, they have a a really noteworthy team behind them of people in the industry. I just wanted to ask you guys if you've heard anything. Yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with Really Wireless. I've had you know a couple meetings with them. Yeah. Anything positive? Do you think they can compete with Helium? How far along are they? Well, Helium's focused on the consumers. So yes, yeah. um, although from what I've seen from from when they've interacted with each other, Helium and them don't really consider each other really, they're very friendly at this point. But okay. um, really wireless, I would say, is a very, very sharp team, very good at marketing. They already do cost comparisons of cellular plans on their site. Like that's what they had almost like day one. So they, they know the space really well um, from their background. And um, so Adam Lyons ran it, had the biggest seed investment in telecom history, 18 million bucks. Um, so they've got a, they got a war chest, not as big as Helium's. Obviously they had their 200 million last November. So, mm -hmm. but uh, they are, I think they, they're going to have some success uh, once they get out of their test net, but mm -hmm. very same hardware. I believe they use a commercial core, not, not, you know, not a previously open core, but uh, yeah. Um, they're not the only ones. There's others in the market too. Was it Fling? So they're, you know, the the consumer decentralized telecom space for CBRS is not dead. It's if anything, it's it's. I'm excited for the next, you know, one to two years as it gets more competitive. Nice. Um, Joe, did you want to speak about something? So I uh, came up. So I, I assumed you had something. I have nothing to add to the conversation other than I agree with Bobby and Russ on everything. They are an excellent source of knowledge. I just wanted to be up on stage with my friends, and I know my presence is very agitating to some in this community. It's okay. If you just want to sit on stage to bug some people, that's fine. It's not a, <laughs> not a problem. I mean, sorry, sorry, JD, didn't mean to talk over you. Huh. I said no, I'm I, giving I my YouTube think... channel to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll stop interjecting. Nope. Back to serious discussion. Yeah, uh, what were you saying? Because uh, I forgot what I was saying. Yeah, well, sorry, I'll jump back. Uh, or Joe, you can say it. But Joe had a recent video where he, he lighted, you know, a lot of the controversies going on. You know, there was the, the SEC subpoena emails that went around. Oh, yeah, yeah. People. Shit, we could talk about that. It's yeah, true. Definitely. I think. Yeah, uh, it, it's a pretty big news in my opinion. Yeah. I, I forgot about that. Uh, does someone have a link to the picture? I thought I talked about it last week, but maybe not. I personally didn't think it was that serious because they want, they asked people to respond. It wasn't like the subpoenas were written to direct people. Maybe they were, but. I didn't think it was that serious. Well, if, if uh, I don't have the photo on hand, but I don't know if someone could drop it in chat. Or so specific people were notified if their account was subpoenaed. Now, if you sold HNT on Coinbase, oh no, is it crypto.com? I forget which one it is. Coinbase.com, Coinbase. right? 
Yeah, okay, if you still ancient tea there, there's a possibility you may have been subpoenaed. I have sold ancient tea on Coinbase. I didn't get that notification. So I think it is specific players that were subpoenaed. Mm -hmm. Well, I would imagine it's people who, who did very large transactions, maybe. like. Yeah, would make sense. And we can only oh, speculate yeah. at this point what it is. We really don't have a lot. It's still news nonetheless. If it's coming from the SEC, could it be uh, something on, on the inside? Could it be relating to leadership or fraud? We don't know. We can only speculate, but it's news nonetheless. And that has just upset some people to the extreme, just total derangement syndrome, that you even would mention it. No, I, it's it's important to mention these things. Um, was there no, any other emails found, or is it just a single picture? Or has anyone else got one? Like, because um, because I do, I do think it's very like, you know, it's it's a very dangerous type of uh, thing that could like it, it could just destroy the whole project, depending on what the hell it is. Right? We don't know what what's going on behind the scenes. Yeah, that's that's the big question hanging over everybody is. Uh, so I, I know multiple people who've gotten those emails. I wouldn't say it's 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 definitely not everyone. Um, and it probably is, you know, is the whales. Um, yeah, we we really don't know. So there's 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 multiple wait, theories wait, wait, wait. that have been floated. You you know multiple people because you know Kenny's yeah. like the picture could be doctored, but that's what I'm trying to figure out. Like if no, multiple I've, I've... people have these image like emails. Yes. Yes, multiple people I've talked to. Uh, apparently, I, I, I'll be honest. I do most of my, almost all my trades on the decks, so um, I, I, I doubt I would be involved. But uh, yeah, I've talked to multiple people who hold large amounts and traded large amounts who have been a, who've gotten this email. So I wouldn't say it's common. Um, I wouldn't say it's too rare. It depends on what you traded. Um, but yeah, they've independently verified it themselves. Also, several people have talked to the SEC and they've. They have confirmed that it is legitimate, but they will not say anything about why they're doing the subpoena. They said that's they're keeping that strictly confidential. So um, I've seen some other emails. Some people have reached out to the SEC to get more clarification and haven't got anywhere. But it's definitely something to keep uh, on. Uh, I think it's it's like a high alert thing. You know, this is something like you shouldn't just brush away, um, even though people might scream fud and everything. It's I don't, it's not even fun. It's it's like very important information. Like, um, I I wish I had more details. I have the same amount of details as you guys. Like, I don't know what's going on. But I wish, yeah, I wish we all had more details. Like, why? Why? You know, the question is is you know how serious is this? Why? Uh, we don't know. It could be something minor related to a bankruptcy. It could be something major related to uh, could it be security trading. HSP we don't know holders or something like want to be for that maybe. Like people who have HSD tokens, maybe, or maybe, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm I'm just guessing we'll, we'll, at this point. But we will find out. Just give it time. It'll eventually come out. We just gotta be patient. It is a little concerning, though. You know, like you you want to uh, deploy hardware, but there's like a lingering SEC thing right there. It's like, uh, what do I do? <laughs> I don't know how long these things take to to um, come to light. Like, is this going to be next year? Maybe we know, or is it going to be something in five years from now? Or like, you know, I, I hope we know sooner than later. Yeah, hopefully we find out more in a couple months, but it could be years. Yeah. If whatever they're investigating turns out to go nowhere, it could be nothing. Yeah, there's that too. The SEC makes some dumb moves sometimes. Like they're not. Uh, <laughs> I don't think they have the best track record with crypto stuff. Well, I'd like to know uh, what your thoughts on that. I'm the boss now. I'm bought is uh, nothing burger and all the yes, which it's very possible. It's uh, you know whatever you want to call them, four quarters and chasers, but it's not good nonetheless. Yeah, we, we could barely hear you, Joe. Just just let me Sorry. know. Like your, your your microphone's very crackly. It's I'm outside. You guys... Yeah, I was I was asking for a comment on the on the pending class action lawsuit and Russ's opinion on it. 
I got a lot of blowback for that, but I'm like I said, you know, this this could dander could be thrown out. Um, so many people want to chalk this up to once again FUD and nothing burger, but we really don't know in the space of crypto. You know, I think the the thing that I the the class action lawsuit just so everyone's aware, there's some sort of class action lawsuit. Um, I don't have the link to it. I, it's on like Scott so Scott website or something. I do have one update that I think anyone knows about that's pretty hot. I'll put it in the chat. Um, um, a guy who was deploying helium out of in Canada um, named Ivan Malone has publicly announced on uh, on one of the H and T groups that he wants to organize another class action against helium and is looking for other people interested in joining him. So uh, we can now go up to two. Um, uh, is this, is it, I mean, I guess it's helium, the whole company. So it's would affect. What's, IoT his, and what's his class action lawsuit based around? Uh, he said, please chat. email him and he'll talk about it. He okay. said anyone who's been banned, had trouble working with support. Um, he's interested in talking with you. Okay. So I don't know him. Um, I've never met him before. Um, you can find him on LinkedIn. His company was pretty small, so he might be just very upset. Do you but, know the name of the company? Yeah, it's right there actually in his Gmail. Um, Wasad IO Technologies. He was a big helium deployer in Canada. Uh, so I've never, uh, never heard the name. I don't think anyone heard of him, but it just shows how the market has gotten very, very tough right now. The the first class action lawsuit of that from Scott Scott lawyer firm or whatever that place is. Um, that that one I find very interesting because they talk about how you're like almost promised rewards, but like they called them dividends. And I'm thinking they probably mean the rewards are dividends. And like, it's such an interesting, interesting case. Like, I think I think that case, if it gets brought to court, um, could actually win just because the people like the the panel, they don't understand this shit. You took the words right out of my mouth. Exactly. Like, it, like the this panel of a, people don't know what this is. They just know, oh, you bought something and you're not getting your dividends. That's a scam. Case closed. Easy. <laughs> like, I mean, the, um, we have seen screenshots of websites saying what people were expecting to earn. So, but uh, no, I don't know. I've, I mean, I, I can say I have I have talked to that law firm, and uh, I don't think it's you know they haven't. There hasn't. It's been at least six or eight months. Um, I don't. I. I don't know if that's going to go anywhere. I think it's a pretty loose case. This one as well looks pretty loose. I wouldn't. I wouldn't think like, oh, you know, the sky is falling because of either one of these. Uh, but it no, does no, I... reflect the greater market and definitely the mood of of people in the greater community who work with helium. It's uh, um, definitely the 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 reduction in earnings on IoT has definitely uh, uh, been you know caused a lot of people to get frustrated. Yeah. Well, uh, we've we've seen this in the past um, when we were selling IoT, um, we we sold to bigger deployers in Canada also, um, you know, thousands of units, and then they deployed them, and then they're all mad that. The rewards went down and then then they try and bring lawsuits against us blah 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 <laughs> and like, i get it everyone everyone here, gets mad at question. each other here's my question if uh h and t went to back past its all-time high and iot went to a penny do we think we'd They're be not seeing complaining. The same, same lawsuits no oh no of course they not. were earning well we wouldn't yeah. i doubt we'd see any of these so yeah, yeah they, that's kind they, of not they fair even make you know? a, They'd probably be gloating to everyone buy units so you can make money. Like, like all, yeah, so that's not really long like you're kind of taking a gamble, you know, when you buy one. Any, any miner you buy, right? You're kind of we all know that you're taking a gamble. I mean, you could get the thing and it could not work. Good luck getting your money we, back. We take this for granted. We we understand we're taking a gamble. Other people, no, no, your promise let rewards go, or something. Let me go even further to give Helium a little bit of credit. I'll say that. At least most of their miners, I'd, I'd put my faith in like 95% of their miners that get delivered work or 98%. Like you very rarely hear about people getting miners that are dead on arrival or just stop working. They're, they're pretty solid little units. Uh, depends on what SD cards they put in. My Nebras, I almost all of them burned out their SD cards. 
Yeah, the, I mean, the it, it depends who manufactures. Some are higher quality than water. others. Yeah, but like Nebra is probably the you, way that you need to put the caveat. Water. You need you need to put the caveat if you get them. They're sad yeah. too. A lot of people didn't get them. Yeah. Um, your uh, AO Crypto, you're on the stage, but uh, I'm going to have to close this call in like four minutes. So let's. <laughs> I, I have to be somewhere you else. Do this earlier, JD. We always go late. <laughs> <laughs> I know I, I should honestly because I don't expect all you guys to come on and, and ki- like we all talk oh no y'all just got to the end of the hardware and stuff so I figured I'd chime in a little bit I mean the hardware itself is great you can do about anything with it <laughs> and probably the less least you know earnings thing you can do with a helium hotspot right now is mine helium like <laughs> you switch it oh, over yeah, to the miners. Oh. so I your logo, are you from BitHarvest? Because that's a, that's a great yeah. logo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You probably saw me in BitHarvest, but that's a great project, you know, for people, you know, kind of calling it quits. Um, reusing your old Helium hardware, that's that's one project, you know, I got a lot, they're, they're saving, I think, a lot of e-waste by allowing people, frust- maybe they're frustrated with Helium or they want to keep doing it, but make more. It's a good project. Uh, thank you. <laughs> and we also, because it's the Moken community call, so I had to join in. We love Moken. We use it for our Explorer on our dashboard. So like any kind of data you're seeing for Helium through the uh, Unity or Luna firmware, I'm not sure which one is out on the uh, Helium devices right now that we're doing, because most of that's in beta. But like yeah, all yeah. of that from Moken. And then and we've I'm, got another uh, project coming up that we'll be doing with them. Yeah, I'm working with you guys on some of that beta software that I'm testing as well. I'm very excited about it. I like the dashboard. I mean, it is, it is, you know, it's all a bit new, but I don't, I don't think like we got some people asking. You probably put the website um, over in the chat there. It's a very new project, very scrappy project. I talked to um, one of your, I don't know what his title was, but he was a very, very sharp developer. Um, Stop, actually, reminded me. Yeah, he runs, yeah. Runs most of everything this time around. We, it's. This is one of the like second or third, you know, uh, projects we've worked on. So I, I kind of ran the first one we did. We both ran the second one. And then this one is is more his running, you know, and I help with it. And the rest of the team there, I mean, I, the whole team is amazing. <laughs> oh, yeah, technically. This is what I really like, like, like why I like talking to other projects. Like I like talking to the technical people because in general, they're, once you talk to like the CTO and you find out, wow, this guy's re- or some of the lead developers or programmers or founders, you know, like these guys are really sharp and really easy to talk to. Um, it's so that that helps that, that at least with me gives me a lot of faith in the project versus like maybe like Flux, where you feel like you're just talking to a bunch of business people trying to get you to buy something, um, and uh, and the answers are less than fulfilling or less or not very technical, very uh, fluffy, I'll say. So. Um, I totally but yeah, I put the link in there. Um, I put the link in there. I, I beat you to the punch. People are curious about awesome. the website. I recommend they go on the Discord. Okay. See, uh, and so you got it work. Uh, Every time I do it, it doesn't work. <laughs> you guys, uh, thank you, JD. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm heading over to the mobile group, working group, in about a minute. Uh, yeah. I just want I'll, to say I'll, that. I'll see you over there. Uh, yeah, 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 dude. Um, everyone's always welcome here. I, I should probably figure out what to do with the time so like there's more time to talk about stuff. Um, you know, it used to be me just in the beginning, but when, when more people keep joining, it extends the uh, the call a lot longer than I'm used to. Um, but yeah, it's um, an AO Crypto. I mean, you've been a part of our community for a very, very long time. I can't even remember the first day, but... Uh, I'm looking forward to like working with you guys on uh, I don't know distributing the hardware or uh, letting people know about your project. Uh, talk talk to Emil. We got a uh, cross meeting coming on Monday. See if you want to join it. Oh yeah, I'll 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 uh, join that for sure. All right, great. I'll yeah, see y'all then. I, I guess uh, I'm going to have to end this because, well, I have to be somewhere else right now. But uh, I want to say thank you guys for, for coming. Uh, Frominator, Joe, AO Crypto, and everyone listening. Um, yeah. Uh, do you guys have anything closing remarks? 
So I that, appreciate that, being here. Appreciate, you know, an open space where we can talk and not, not worried about getting trolled too hard from uh, diehards, but uh, just speak openly about the space and what's going on. Cause there's, it's a, it's, it's a very exciting space. Yeah. Um, it's hard to find like a troll free zone, but you know, I, I feel like we don't have too many problems here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I want to say thank you guys for, for joining. And uh, I guess I'll see you guys next Thursday. And yeah, have a, have a good weekend guys. I know it's Thursday, but yeah, I'll, I'll see you guys next Thursday. And uh, we, we do have this one recorded. So um this is going to be our first recorded one, so maybe we'll like edit it and throw it on YouTube or something so everyone could hear about it. If you guys Sounds are uh, cool sharing uh, what was spoken about. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so I'll, I'll see you guys uh, next week. Thank you for attending. Okay, bye guys.